attributes. This is something we run into with a lot of Azure Active Directory setups where you're integrating with a partner or a third party provider to help you on developing content or managing your users in your system. Uh, we have learned that there are some very interesting things with guest users and the way that Azure and Microsoft have implemented them. Um, we're going to be going through some use cases and business problems that we bumped into and how we've solved them uh, with different clients. Uh, my name is Reese Briggs. I'm a member of the cloud team here. I've uh, been working on Azure, Microsoft, and all the fun things that come with Azure AD and single sign-on for a lot of years. Um, and so we'll dive into the big business problem that we have been seeing and tackling with um, missing guest user or guest account attributes. So the big part to know here is that guest objects are awesome. They empower your organization to do a lot of things like teams and um, add people from other organizations to access content and work with your organization in really interesting ways that can empower your business. What we've learned though is that guest, um, guest accounts in Azure AD receive a one-time push of a very limited set of attributes. In Azure AD and Active Directory, we're very used to seeing a lot of attributes, including titles and um, on-premise SAM account names and um, additional information like groups, etc. With guest accounts, you get the three. Um, you get display name, email address, and photo. And you see that whenever you send out a um, guest account invite, the those specific properties are mentioned on the um, consent uh, that's propped up to the user in the partner organization that you're working with. So when you send out that teams, you know, I'm adding to a team, a person from an external org, they get a email. It says consent to allow this organization to have information, pops this up and it calls out specifically profile data means name, email address and photo. When you accept that, it provides that one time to the partner organization or your organization in this case. What we've learned is that sometimes that can have some real world implication that that's a one time push and that that does not include additional information about your account. Uh, we have learned that with organizations that are using um, something like their SAM account name or their like pre windows. Uh, 2000 logon name as the identifier for the user inside of um, applications that has implications for SSO. So when you set up those guest accounts, knowing that they, it's a one time push can be really helpful. As that user ever changes in your org, we have had times where people say, why are my users no longer able to access? Why do I have to add them again? Well, that's because they're display name or their email address has changed in their tenant. And so you would need to re-add them with their new email address, send a new invite, do another consent, and then they'll be able to access. You can create opportunities to solve this problem where you're implementing a regular sync, and we'll talk about that in the solutions uh, in just a moment. But we've seen a specific example where the Azure AD SSO connection an application required the use of user on premise SAM account name. And that user on premise SAM account name does not come across on a guest account object. And so therefore what businesses usually do, it's very common, is they build a duplicate account inside of the tenant. So the tenant is going to have a um a account for the external user um, and usually it's like a contractor account or a third party account um, for journey team a lot of times we're like jt.user at company.com as a secondary account so that we can get access into their systems and use their sso applications what we've learned is that if you do want to leverage b2b and guest accounts you can bring those users in as guests and then supplement the information on their guest account object with additional pieces of information, including a uh, on-premise SAM account name. So 
if you are working with a partner organization and you say, tell me what your SAM account name is on your guest account object, I will load that piece of data into the application that we're working on. Um, so if that's like a CRM platform or a um, application that uses um, policy management, um, those applications can be made available to sign in with an external partner directly into the application using their existing Microsoft account. So this sink of information can make that story easier. Solution to implement that sink of additional information that you need, be it attributes, like I need to know that this person is a staff or a third party partner or some piece of information like their business title. Uh, we've seen that too, where it's important to know the business title of someone or the department that they're coming from, from the external organization so that that information can be provided to the application. You can do that with a PowerShell script where you're updating those user objects in the cloud. You can do that with a third party uh, lifecycle provisioning solution, or you can use Azure AD natively with skin provisioning to do that. And so when the user is connected to the organization, you can build an enterprise application inside of Azure to target additional attributes. So as you drill into the provisioning inside of that enterprise application, you get the opportunity to select the, um, the provision Azure Active Directory users and you drill into that. And you can see there's create, update, and delete. You can go in and add additional things like job title, preferred language. You can change and do um, expressions if you need to, to combine additional information to output the custom attributes that you need into your application or into Azure AD itself and get that additional email uh, or information on the guest object. Um, we've had times where it's very important for shipping to have street address and physical delivery information on that guest object. So when the guest logs into your system, it tells that system, even though this person is a guest account from an external org, I've collected additional data around their delivery address and I'm going to provide that to you. So if you need to ship something, et cetera, it already has that built into the system. And if you have these updates turned on with this sync engine created between the two organizations, if that delivery address for that user ever changes in their, in their home tenant, it will update on your guest object and provide that information to your connected application. So there's a really good use case for adding additional attributes above and beyond just the user, like the name and the the photo and the email address. Like things like the on-premise SAM account name or things like delivery address or titles or um, the country code that they're in, et cetera. And so this type of build out of building an enterprise application is custom. It is doable in Azure. It does require both sides to have um, this, this connection where you're building out an enterprise application and a skim provisioning engine to synchronize that data over. Um, we've, we've done it with um, partner orgs and it is pretty simple to set up. Once both organizations understand that you're going to be adding additional information outside of name, email address, and photo, and the use case that you need that for, they would much rather have you automatically get those updates for addresses than have to provide a CSV export or ask for those each time. And so building out this extra piece of infrastructure very doable, something that we've done a couple of times um, and have seen great success with. And so if you'd like to contact us um, to work on any of these problems or challenges with guest accounts and managing attributes, you can connect with us with phone, email, or on social media.